All right, so let's talk about the machine vapor. So, hot gun that just came out recently. It always seems like the, you know, the really, really expensive guns are the ones that people want to review the most. I don't know why. <laughs> so this gun's coming in right now. Uh, just hit the market, and it's coming in right now at about, uh, I think they're selling them right now on ANS gear for like 17 and change. Um, definitely an expensive, <laughs> definitely an expensive gun. Um, puts it pretty close to what Planet Eclipse charges for the CSL, which is one of the most expensive guns on the market pr pretty much ever come out in paintball. So, 1750 is definitely up there. It's $250 more than the Lux. Um, what about $500 more than the Geo 2.1? $400 more than the Geo uh, Geo 3? Um, yeah, it's up there. That's pretty high. I mean, even a couple hundred bucks more than even the special edition DM12. So it's, it, you know, it definitely, definitely an expensive, expensive gun. Um, inside of the box, you get the, uh, you get a, actually a really nice barrel kit. It doesn't come with, you know, a bunch of worthless barrel kit uh, or worthless barrel backs. Like some, you know, sometimes you get a, like a 695 barrel back. No, you actually get a 679, uh, 681, 685, and a 689. Uh, barrel backs. You get four barrel backs, which is nice. And then uh, you get one tip, which is a standard 14 inch, heavily ported, which is good. It's going to help the gun uh, be, you know, stay nice and quiet. And you also get, um, you get two selections of triggers here. You get a flat blade trigger, uh, which is very similar to the, um, like the old impulse trigger. And you get this kind of this, uh, this uh, little uh, kind of, I don't want to say a Sith trigger, but basically just call it like a bump trigger. Um, probably this would be a little bit better for PSP, just a flat blade. This would probably be a little bit better for semi-auto, um, just because you know your hand posture stuff like that. Um, case is pretty decent. Uh, there's no manual. Uh, you got to go to the website and download the manual. It comes with a very small parts kit, um, just some basic, basic Allen keys. Uh, they're not even ball socket Allen keys, and you get a sticker. So, um, you know, packaging. Uh, I think for this price range, they need to go a lot harder on the packaging. <laughs> if, if you're going to be charged $1,750, I'm going to expect a full color manual in here. I'm going to expect a nice parts kit, um, you know, at least to what they put like in the DM12. You get a nice uh, parts kit with uh, multiple parts, not just, you know, I, I, you know, in my opinion, if they're going to charge this much for a gun, um, you know, Ziploc bags, this is unacceptable. I mean, this is just absolutely unacceptable for a $1,750 gun. So, um, you know, Allen keys, I would like to see a nice, you know, Allen key set. I mean, if Dangerous Power can put a decent Allen key set in the $300 guns, you know, we, we definitely should be seeing a nice Allen key set in a $1,750 gun, you know, and, and uh, you know, a, a little uh, Ziploc bag with, um, you know, a couple springs, and it looks like here, four O-rings and two detents unacceptable for a $1,750 gun. Absolutely unacceptable. So, you know, it is nice that you get the barrel kit and it is nice that you get the the trigger, okay? Um, you know, if you figure, let's let's figure, let's figure just put this right out there with the DM12 and the Geo. Okay, so let's say we're gonna, we're gonna put price this right over like a $1,300 gun. Okay, barrel kit, a good barrel kit would run maybe what, $100, $150 uh, that's anodized to match your gun and an extra trigger would run about what, 50 bucks? So. You know, you are looking at about an additional $200 worth of value for the barrel kit and the the trigger. So, um, but let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get into some basic maintenance really quick, and then we'll take it out and do an efficiency test, and we'll come back for the conclusion. All right, so let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and weigh it. Now you'll recognize that board. That's the same board that's in the. Um, uh, in all, you know, a lot of the dangerous power guns. It's in the FX. It's in the Revy. Um, that uh, that that OLED board um, was pretty much made famous by the uh, Dangerous Power Gun. So, also you can see it's got the laser eyes. So let's see what we're weighing in here now. So it looks like just under, just under uh, two pounds. So one pound, fifteen point six ounces. So uh, sneaks in just under two pounds total. So let's go ahead and take it apart. Now you're gonna see when you take this gun apart, uh, parts the the bolts the bolt system. It's now obviously it's a little bit different, but very very similar to the um, you know very similar bolt system to the Shocker, the Lux, the FEP Quest. And also the um, uh, and also the uh, the Vanguard Demon. 
you know you see you're starting to see this uh, this stem design a lot you know obviously the difference between that you know this and shocker you know the shocker had the o-rings in the middle this is more towards the back um, so you know same thing with the lux now lux is using a spring but um, you know you, you see you're starting to see you know this type of stem design now here's a tip too if you're about to buy a gun you know go download the manual and take a look at the parts inside the gun and see what it looks like it's going to give you a really good insight as to how the gun shoots and stuff like that you know so you know if it's got this type of uh, this type of bolt design here where it, you know slides forward on these you know on this little bolt stem You know well, what other gun shoots like that? You know, you've got the Lux So it's gonna shoot like a Lux or a Shocker or an uh, FEP Quest or a Vanguard Demon You know for the most part the efficiency and everything is gonna be pretty close to the same but uh, bolt is very simple three pieces to it and um you know, there's not much to you know taking apart this bolt and clean it off. One thing I do like is that the the bolt has a flat tip face. You know, and that's really nice, especially nowadays with paint being so inconsistent. You could one day you could be shooting 689 paint, the next day you could be shooting you know 675 paint. But having a flat face bolt like that always lines the um, always lines the ball up with the with the eyes and the detents and prevents that roll back you know if you're tilting your gun up and you're shooting you know a high lane or something like that and the ball rolls behind the eyes you know it prevents all of that stuff so definitely good on them for uh, making a flat face bolt and like you know like shockers and stuff like that it, it does like a pretty heavy helping of lube now the machine gun the machine vapor does come with its own lube looks like a Dow 33 um, it, it definitely does like a lot of lube on the o-rings uh, inside of the bolt so as you guys saw in the video I was having pro you know I had problems with the gun with a lot of drop-off and pretty much the biggest reason why was because I was getting vapor lock inside the gun and uh, vapor lock, um, you know I was getting um, you know airlock inside the gun and the bolt wasn't cycling all the way because but, you know, I didn't have enough lube on the O-rings. Go ahead and turn this off real quick. Now, I do like the board that comes with the Vapor. The, the you know, the Dangerous Power FX and also the Revy. I mean, the board is a little overcomplicated, you know, so if you've got some time, you know, you could definitely mess around. It's got some really cool features, select fire, cheater modes, breakout cheater modes. Um, it's got all sorts of stuff. You can cycle between different modes from, you know, Millennium to NXL to PSP to semi-auto all by just tapping the power button. So it's got some really cool features and some really cool modes. Um, taking apart the regulator, you're going to need a, I believe this is a 1.5 millimeter Allen key. So uh, you're not going to be able to use a standard Allen key when taking apart the, uh, the regulator. So just be ready for that. We've got uh, two set screws that we're going to take apart here. Okay, now let's just go ahead and unscrew this from the. You don't necessarily have to do this. You can you know you can leave the reg attached to do the basic service. But um, now what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, unscrew this bottom piece here. Now if it's a little tight. Um, you can take a pair of pliers and just gently grip it and start unscrewing it But you know you don't want to Go super super tight when you put this back together again. You just want to go, you know Just snug just enough because you don't want to you know really scratch that part up when you take it apart There we go And there's pretty much your regulator uh, so not much there um, you know you can take yourself like one of my favorite things to clean guns up with is uh, you know the Kingman 50 cal swab you know go ahead and clean up if you see any dirt inside there uh, wipe this down with a you know with a towel you know, on the regulator you can pretty much get away with using whatever lube you want but I did notice with the uh, the bolt you definitely want to use a thicker lube just like you would if you were lubing up a shocker or uh, something like that thin lube you might get a uh, you might get some air creep and it might cause the gun to shoot a little bit bizarre okay so let's go ahead and put this back together all right I'm going to go ahead and close this up and then now um, what we'll do is uh, before we put it on the gun let's go ahead and put in this uh, rear allen key or rear allen screw
Now, when I was out there, I mean, the reg is nice. It, it's, you know, it's not a super sensitive regulator in that, um, you know, it only takes like a eighth of a turn and all of a sudden your velocity jumps 80 feet per second. It's, it's, it's very uh, easy to get the exact velocity you want to get with the regulator. So the regulator is well designed. I believe it says in the manual from the factory, it comes set at like 160 or 180 PSI. So, and there you go. So let's go ahead and put the, uh, the bolt back in. There you go. So we've just uh, taken apart and um, did the uh, maintenance on the gun. All right, so we're gonna do the efficiency test on the machine vapor. So let's go ahead and show you the tank. So it looks like we're just over 4,300. Uh, 4,300 PSI. Let's go ahead and take a um, tank temperature reading. Looks like the tank is registering at about 100 and 106 degrees. Hopefully you guys can see that. 106 degrees. All right, let's go to the chronograph. Hopefully you can see that we're sitting uh, right about in the upper 290s. All right, we'll go ahead and start the efficiency test. So looks like we got uh, about nine, uh, looks like about nine and a third pods. Thank you. All right, so let's wrap up the machine vapor review. Um, I, I don't, you know, lately these these new companies that have been hitting the market, you know, charging these, you know, huge amount of prices for these untested, untried guns from brand new companies, man, that scares the hell out of consumers. <laughs> I know it scares me. I, I'm real hesitant to drop 
you know, that kind of money on a gun, you know, pay $1,750 on a gun that nobody I know owns. Uh, the company's brand new, no idea if it's a good gun, if there's problems with it or what. Um, I, think, I think sometimes these companies shoot themselves in the foot with that kind of, um, I know they got to recoup the cost of bringing the gun to the market and stuff like that, but um, that's a lot of money. <laughs> so, um, you know, with that, with that being said, you know, overall in the gun, it, it, you know, in my opinion, $1,750 is a gun overpriced. Yeah, I think the gun's a little bit overpriced. Um, you know, you're not getting, with the exception of the barrel kit and the extra trigger, you're not really getting anything out of the box that you wouldn't get with, uh, you know, either a Lux or, you know, Geo, D12, something. I mean, yeah, you get the OLED board, yeah, you get the extra trigger, yeah, you get the barrel kit, but, um, you know, for $750, there's some things I would like to see a little bit, done a little bit differently. Um, one, the trigger. Um, one thing I noticed with the trigger is there's no post travel. Okay, now I've got a problem with that because if you set this trigger up improperly and you put your activation screw too far back, if you know, if you're like me sometimes when you're about to run and you dive into the stake, if you squeeze the trigger really hard, you might, you know, damage your micro switch because you might drive your screw through your micro switch. Now I know there is a little there's a little stop in here. Once you pretty much mash the micro switch, you know, pretty much into you know that flat, that micro switch flat flat. Um, there is a metal stop here that does stop the trigger, but if you set this trigger out, you know, quite a ways to where it's more at an angle, you know, there is a very good chance that you could drive your screw through your, you know, through and into your micro switch and damage your micro switch. Okay. There's, you know, for $750 gun, there should be a post travel screw on here so that you're not relying on your trigger mashing up against your micro switch in order to stop the trigger, okay? And just having that adjustability for a gun this expensive is definitely, you know, is definitely, you know, not out of the realm of asking for it if you're dropping that kind of cash on it. Something else too I noticed with the trigger, I would like to see this trigger have extended inner raceways on the ball bearings, okay? What that's gonna do is that's gonna prevent the trigger from rubbing up against the, uh, rubbing up against the inside of the trigger frame. And it's not that big of a deal when you're in PSP. Okay, in PSP, it doesn't matter what the trigger feels like because all you got to do is pull it, you know, pull it five times a second. But if you're shooting semi-auto and you're looking for the maximum amount of trigger speed possible, you want, you know, you want your trigger to be an amazing trigger. Okay, you don't want to feel any grit or drag or, or scratching on the inside of the trigger frame. And unfortunately with this trigger, I did feel that. Now I do know there are set screws in here. You know, you can adjust a little to the left, a little to the right. You can't try to get your uh, trigger centered perfectly. But, you know, you when you're getting on the trigger, you definitely can feel, even with it set as perfectly as you can get it, you can feel your trigger rubbing up against the inside of your trigger frame. And it's not a good feeling for a gun this expensive. So, um, you know, other than that, I, I do like the way it feels in your hand. I know for me, you know, being, you know, six foot four, I do like the, the, the meteor, uh, trigger front, you know, the, the trigger frame here, the grip frame. I love that. The, uh, I do like, you know, how the, the reg sits in the front. It's, it's, it's very comfortable. It's easier to wrap your fingers around. There's nothing really crazy to catch your hands on. Um, you know, going down the back of the gun, you do see a lot of Lux, you know, a lot of things very reminiscent of a Lux on here. The detents, the eye covers, the, the, the rearward facing detents, just like a Lux, just like an impulse, um, bolt design. It's very similar to a Lux. It's, it's, you know, a lot of people are calling this gun, the a Lux with an OLED board. That's, you know, not exactly unfair to call it that. Um, you know, but the, you know, I do notice some things, you know, especially on the finish of it, you know, it appears that there's different types of aluminum throughout the gun. You can see that the, uh, I can see that the, the rear, uh, you know, the, this, you know, this rear piece right here on the back part of the bolt, I do, I can see that there's a slight shade difference in anodizing between that and the gun. Once again, unacceptable for a gun this expensive. You want to see the fit and finish and color of this gun completely perfect from one end to the other to be charging that kind of a price. You see it on the CSL, all the CSLs that come out are perfect. They're charging almost $1,800. This gun, you know, machine trying to charge $1,800 everything better be perfect. So I think the gun, I definitely think the gun is slightly overpriced. Um, you know, I know also they're supposed to be coming with a new, you know, with a loader. I haven't seen that yet. Maybe when it comes out with the loader, you know, that might get us more into the ballpark if it's a good loader. Um, you know, no one, no one knows anything about the loader yet. So it, it's hard to judge that. I know supposedly the first few hundred that were supposed to be sold are supposed to come, you know, you're supposed to be able to get a free loader later on. I don't know anything about that. Um, maybe with that, you know, if it's a really good loader, like a rotor or something like that, you know, then maybe, 
you know, maybe maybe we'll you know, maybe we talk about you know justifying the price a little bit more, but um, I think as it is right now, the box definitely is slightly overpriced. But on the field, it shoots really nice. It's quiet. It's soft. You know, no surprises with it. It's it's you know, there's nothing really crazy here with this gun. It's a proven design, so they're not really going really too far out of the box in regards to its design. Something like that's a proven design. They've used this type of design, this type of bolt system for years. Um, I know it's slightly different to avoid patents and stuff like that, but for the most part, it, it pretty much functions exactly the same. I do like the ASA. The ASA is really nice. Um, you know, the gun, the gun's nice. I mean, it's almost there. <laughs> it's almost there. Now, maybe in a year, two years, you know, we're going to see them, you know, polish up some of these last minute details here. And, and, you know, maybe with it, come with the freeloader, you know, I think, you know, maybe I'll change my tone. I'll say, okay, you know, yeah, maybe it's worth the $1,750. But as of right now, I, I just don't see that, that kind of value in the box, you know, maybe fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars creeping right up there in the Lux neighborhood. Yeah, I could see that $250 more in a Lux. I just don't see that. So, um, but I do like the feed neck. I like how the feed neck is machined into the body. It's not screwed in, which is really nice. It's, it's machined right into the body, just like what you'd see with like the Mark 6s, Mark 7s. Very, very sturdy feed neck. It makes the loader sit extremely low on the gun. Um, awesome for gun fighting because you've got such a low center of gravity. Um, you know, you stick a rotor or some sort of um, like a prophecy on here, and I mean, it's just, it feels like it's just glued to the gun. Really nice. Um, but, Gun's almost there, so <laughs> that's about it. Um, hopefully that uh, helps uh, answer some uh, questions about the machine.